1965, I took the first Star Trek pilot to Tricon at Cleveland, a science fiction convention. And when they began to show my pilot, I noticed a gentleman standing nearby. I heard a gentleman standing nearby, surrounded by people, beginning to talk as my show came on. And I nervously, I hurried over to him and said, for Christ's sakes, uh, be quiet. They've got, they've got my pilot on. Someone then walked up to me and said, congratulations, you've just insulted Isaac Asimov. I don't know if you remember that uh, incident, Ike. No, I don't, but it rings true, because I'm always talking. Well, the, the point of it I remember is, uh, after the show was over, the man that uh, I had always wanted to meet, my, my idol in science fiction, Isaac Asimov, came over and apologized and said, you're quite right, I shouldn't have been talking, and then said some nice things about the pilot, and it was the start of a <laughs> long friendship. Here's probably one of the oldest questions that, uh, to you. What is science fiction? Well, I don't know that I'm particularly a, an expert on this, despite the fact I've written a great many books. But I've always said that science fiction is that branch of literature which deals with the response of human beings to changes in science and technology. Now, that's a rough and ready description of science fiction, but a lot of people ask me, how do I differentiate science fiction from fantasy? That's the second most favorite question among science fiction people. And to my way of thinking, that although science fiction and fantasy both deal with a background which is completely different from the normal background that exists today, in fantasy there is no way in which we can travel from our background to the fantastic background, which may involve magic, elves, fairies, and so on. But we can at least conceivably travel from our background to the science fictional background by appropriate changes in the level of science and technology. You've written some 110 books, perhaps more. Is the Foundation the one you'd like to be remembered for, or, or is it another one? I think the Foundation trilogy is, whether I like it or not, the one I'm going to be most nearly remembered for. That is, if I'm remembered at all. My own favorite science fiction book is The Gods Themselves. In my nonfiction, I presume Asimov's Guide to Science is the most nearly famous book I've written, although the trouble with that is it goes out of date unless I continually keep updating it. It's the one that uh, I've used uh, most, and in, in the making of Star Trek, it, it sat on my uh, desk most of the time. I, uh, I think you've seen more new writers happen, new science fiction writers, uh, than, than most have. How about a quick course for would-be science fiction writers? What are the most uh, common mistakes you think are made in the field? Well, from my standpoint, the most common mistake a science fiction writer makes is to downgrade science. Now, these days particularly, many science fiction writers have very little to do with science, and many science fiction stories have very little to do with science. But whether a science fiction story has science or not, it is impossible to write a good one if you are completely ignorant of science. You will make mistakes even when you think science isn't involved. I think that it is important to at least know something about science, whether you're going to put science in or not. It shows. As a matter of fact, that's what makes the difference between Star Trek and all the other science fiction series that I have seen. Star Trek was the only one when whoever it was who was involved, Gene, and I mention no names, insisted on people knowing something about science and preparing the... And it showed, you know. You could see that even when you broke the laws of science, you were doing it intelligently and plausibly. There are other science fiction shows, no names please, in which it is quite clear that the writers and the producer know nothing about science and don't care, and that shows too, and it is impossible to be a self-respecting viewer and accept it. Well, you're not saying to the young writer that he must be anything near a scientist. He ha just has to have respect for it and be willing to research it when it's used in that particular point is used in a story. Absolutely. How about uh, the same question regarding uh, science fiction movies as, as opposed to novels? What, are, what, are your, what is your principal criticism concerning them? The same thing? Well, I tell you, science fiction movies have a special difficulty that uh, the books do not have. They have to deal with a much larger audience. If a book sells 5,000 copies, it's viable. 
a movie has to sell 40 million, so to speak, mm -hmm. which means that they cannot play for the minority the way a book can. In a book, you can be pretty highbrow and figure, well, there are 5,000 people who will like this. A movie has to hit, in some respects, the lowest common denominator. There should be quite a few people playing this record who will appreciate this question, Ike. Your literary output ranks at the top in both volume and quality. Uh, typically, when your name came up with Ray Bradbury the other day, he simply described you in three words, that incredible man. What is your advice to the would-be writer beyond the usual advice, uh, write? Well, it seems to me that the writer must use all things human and all things human-made and all things that impinge upon the human being as his raw material, which you can say briefly, he uses the universe as his raw material. So the writer must go through life with his eyes and ears open. He must allow everything to flood in and ignore nothing. What, are you, what you're saying is, uh, is really that the beginnings of being a good science fiction writer is first to be interested in the reality around you. I think so, yes.